Hi everyone! Welcome to the coloring from Australian Animals by Selena Fennig and today we will be coloring Echidna. I think that she is incredibly cute. If you look at reference pictures, you can easily understand that we don't need many colors, just various shades of browns and probably beige or gray as additional colors. And I decided that I don't want to use my frequently used Prisma colors or polychromoses. Sometimes I just want to use some of the other pencil sets which I own and which are slightly abandoned. I realized that using a set of dark skin tones where we have quite nice various shades of brown colors can be helpful also for the for the fur, for the head and uh, legs of the echidna. To color fur, I selected a couple of shades of warm brown colors. The lighter shade, which is olive brown for me, I will put near the tips of the hair and near the base, near the root of the hairs. I will be using darker shade of brown. Also, I will put a lighter color around the nose and around eyes in order to attract more attention to these areas. If you don't own this set of pencils, you can easily use any two shades of brown. You don't need to find exactly the same hue of brown colors. Just use one lighter and one darker. From Prisma color set, I would suggest to use dark amber or chocolate as a darker color and you can combine it with lighter colors like um, sienna brown or like light amber. I think that uh, four of echidna can be in various shades of brown, so simply think about lighter and darker brown pencils. When I color four, I try to work with nicely sharpened pencil in order to get visible pencil strokes and I never work with circular movements of pencil. I always work with uh, sharp strokes in order to imitate individual hairs, in order to imitate texture of four. So it's important to keep your pencils nicely sharpened and with uh, these pencils and with polychromoses it's much easier comparing to softer prisma colors. After I colored four with two shades of warm brown colors, olive brown and chalk tone, I felt like probably it's a little bit yellowish for my taste and I want to add a little bit of um, more natural or even grayish brown color. That's why on the next step I grabbed my Prisma Color Espresso, very helpful dark rich color, and I added it in the areas which I wanted to shade. For example, areas where uh, legs are connected to the body or area on the neck. And I think that with this mix of two brighter uh, warm brown colors and one uh, brown-gray color, four started to look much more realistic. Each time when I color four, after I apply main colors to the four, I prefer to blend everything, mostly using my Derwent burnisher. It really helps to cover all white spots between pencil strokes and it's extremely important when you work on such paper as we have in this book. So I blended everything with my burnisher and if you feel after this step that you have lost some contrast or some texture of the fur, you can easily go over the blended area again with the same colors. But I was quite happy how 
legs and head of my echidna looked and I decided to start solving problem of how to color all those needles and spikes because they are quite thin and areas between those spikes they are very dark dark brown almost black and spikes they are light sometimes you can find some light brown colors or beige colors or pale gray colors on the spikes if you look at reference pictures so if you <laughs> Think about how to color them quickly. First, I did not very wise step. I started to uh, fill in spaces between spikes using polychromous dark sepia. But quickly I realized that it's not the best way. And even if I color carefully, I still wasn't able to go over all those tiny needles and spikes. So instead, I decided that I first do lighter parts, I will color all the spikes and after that I will fill in remaining spaces between them. Again, needles can be colored in various colors. You can use Prisma color beige, for example, or party beige, or one of them. Uh, 30% warm gray or French gray colors, anything which can uh, help you to um, do this uh, pale brown or beige colors. I selected again two pencils from Dark Skin Tone set, I really love them, and near the tips, uh, spikes of my echidna is a uh, very pale beige, and near the base they are slightly more brownish. Near the tip of each spike I used suede color. This pencil is quite similar to Prisma color peach beige. And near the base of each uh, spike I used leather pencil, which can be easily switched for Prisma color beige or beige sienna. When I selected colors which I will need for dark spaces between um, spikes, I realized that probably the upper part of the back of this echidna will be slightly more highlighted and backs will be more in the shadow. That's why for the dark areas I also will be using two pencils dark chocolate for more highlighted areas and polychromous dark sepia for the more shadow areas. Unfortunately, I had to combine various pencil brands because I have very limited palette of uh, Black Widow pencils. I have only this set of dark skin tones and the other set of 24 pencils where I grabbed my dark chocolate pencil. But for darker shades I sometimes need to go to my polychromoses. They are always very helpful when you need to create shading. And in the end, in order to add more texture and to draw some small details, like eyes. I even used my simple black ball pen. It worked nicely on top of the pencils and it really helped me to add some texture and some contrast where I needed them. I hope that you like my echidna and that you will join me in the second part for various orchids.